The hurt box around Percival's far standing heavy slash now shrinks faster, making it more difficult to punish. Before you could get timings like this and get whiff punish for it. As you can see, though, it's only been reduced by a couple of frames, and it's still very likely that you can get whiff punish on the sword hitbox of this move. His dash heavy attack also got buffed. Its travel speed and the distance have both been increased. As you can see, it now only takes three dashing heavy attacks to reach from full screen. This is nice since Percival can link a far heavy slash out of this move on successful hit. He'll appreciate being able to use this attack at more ranges and get more reliable hits with it. The startup of his medium fireball has been reduced down to 18 frames from 22. There's a couple of implications to this. For starters, this means you can actually use it to frame trap at the end of a triple attack string against six frame normals. <laughs> Before you would get a trade. That said, I wouldn't advise using this as part of your pressure game sequence. On block, you're fairly negative and will get punished by point blank range. Negative seven to be exact, so you're opened up to some medium punishes. And your reward on hit isn't too great either, even with a stock in the corner. You can't get any links off of this move, so ultimately you're risking a little bit of fireball poke damage for a medium punish, so I would recommend using this in a string. This buff does have some implications for Percival's combo routing, though. Before, the medium fireball would whiff here. You're now able to not only link into it, but also pick up afterwards as well. This could potentially broaden Percival's combo routing in the corner so he can save his EX cooldowns. His ultimate fireball has a few changes to make it more consistent across the board. It now hits twice. They modify the damage distribution. I'm not exactly sure how, because they don't list it. However, the point of this change is so that if the opponent ever blocks the first hit, regardless of the range, Percival is always plus nine, meaning that he always has a reliable situation for a setup to go for. And here's how it behaved before. Before, you'd have to be farther out to get more plus frames off of this one, but now you get the same generous amount of plus frames regardless of the situation. This also is helpful for him to have consistent combo routing if this is successful on hit. Plus six at close range means that you're not going to really get anything outside of a light link. Plus 12 here means you can link mediums and heavies. <laughs> Here's how it behaves now. You're always plus 13 regardless of when this hits. I'm pretty sure Percival players will appreciate just having a consistent situation on block and on hit when using this move so that they can just basically simplify their flow chart instead of having to adjust it based on proximity with the opponent. The medium and heavy version of his DP, Plotzen, has gotten a couple of changes that are very much in line with what we saw with Jita and Gran in the earlier videos. The hitbox for the first hit of his non-buffed medium DP has been expanded upwards, whereas the heavy version of his DP also had that same buff applied. For both versions, namely the Plotzen with the buff applied to it, the first hit is now unteckable, which means if only the first hit hits and the rest of it whiffs, the opponent's not going to be able to wake up and punish you for the rest of the DP whiffing on them. It's just a nice little quality of life change for him to make it more reliable to go for DPs and have a successful outcome if any hit connects. These changes are very hard to show, but I think they're simple enough to understand where you don't necessarily need me to dig for a comparison. Lord Strike has received several buffs to its various versions and as well as its follow-ups, making it a far better tool for Percival overall. Let's start by going through the changes in order listed on the patch. The heavy version of Lord Strike's light follow-up, Schneiden, now causes a juggle state on grounded hits. This is without any sort of buffs applied to it. This means that Percival is able to get some good knockdowns in mid-screen off of this. And in the corner, you're able to get combos. <laughs> This is a nice buff for Percival that means that he's going to be able to get better combos as well as better mid-screen pressure when he's not up to any stocks. 
Before, this is pretty useless. The opponent was left grounded and you were at a plus zero situation, so this is basically just used as like some sort of standing reset, but really it wasn't a reset at all because you had no advantage. Percival definitely appreciates this buff. The light and medium versions of Lord Strike's medium follow-up, Mocked, has received several Sucks. changes to its startup, hit stun, as well as properties on hit. All of this is to make it a better move when you actually use it to connect with the opponent. Before, it was largely designated just as a means for Percival to reset his pressure into plus frame. It had 20 frames startup before. Now the startup is down to 17 frames. This doesn't really have too many implications for his pressure and block strings because it's not like all of a sudden he's going to frame trap against 6 frame lights with this reduced startup. My theory here though is that it's likely going to make it so that he's able to use this more as a combo tool. The mid-air hit stun buff as well as the ground bounce has a couple of implications altogether with it. The ground bounce means that Percival's Okazemi is stronger on knockdown. Before it was at plus 27 frames. Now he's at plus 35 frames. He doesn't really get anything too crazy off of this one. He doesn't have a safe jump or anything, but he'll appreciate having the extra frame advantage to run the opponent closer to the corner. The mid-air hit stun is actually pretty good for him overall because the opponent could relatively jump against this move and not really fear too much of a punish. Now, if you're able to catch the opponent mid-air with Lord Strike mocked, you're able to actually get a full combo off of it. Compare that to how to behave before. You couldn't link anything off of this hit. Now the opponent is not going to be able to rely on jumping up against Percival if he's going to autopilot into some sort of Lord Strike pressure. If Percival does this and he sees the opponent's moving up, he could use Mocked and get some pretty good rewards as this using as an anti here. The final adjustment to the Lord Strike Mock version on these versions is that if when he has a stock, you're able to actually follow up with additional grounded attacks. Before you didn't get anything. Now let's compare what rewards you can get. This is nice for Percival. This move was largely used just for block pressure only, and if you ever got a hit with the opponent, it was just simple damage overall. Now there's actually a real threat for when you can get a hit with this move, and that makes Percival all the more terrifying. The change to the buff versions of the light and medium Lord Strike mock also applies to the heavy version without any stocks. Again, a lot of utility here for Percival. The medium and heavy versions of Lord Strike into the heavy follow-up, Zeracen, have had a couple of changes to the recovery on clean hit. They've all been reduced, and so now instead of only being plus 15 on hit, he's now plus 25 on hit. And the overall duration is down from 74 frames to 64 frames. Well, 63 for the heavy version. If you get this knockdown and choose to get a stock with Percival, you're going to give up your advantage, but you're going to be pretty much completely safe with the spacing that you have. Negative six at this distance is unpunishable. Compare that to before. You're negative 16 at this range, a whole difference of 10 frames. Some moves could reach and catch you for going for this. The ultimate version of this move on block, however, no longer causes a guard crush. It seems like the opponents push a little farther back in mid-screen from this move. In the corner, though, you're still point blank. I'm not entirely sure how this is supposed to be in nerf. Perhaps it has something to do with how easy it is to buffer a reversal option against it now. So, either way, if there's a personal main that can explain why losing this guard crush could be considered a nerf, do let me know. There's a lot of changes listed for his down special Tramary. I'm going to try and simplify this at all by just saying that it's still terrible on block and still terrible on whiff. However, if you have five stocks overall, you're actually able to get combos after you use this move in a chain. Here's how it would function before at this level. As you can see, we're still trying to stock up when the opponent's in knockdown. In the corner, you also don't get any follow-ups before. This kind of felt bad because this basically was meant that it was a combo ender for you to access these tools, and at some points of the match, you necessarily didn't want to use it for that. Let's look at how it behaves now. From mid-screen, if you do the second hit of a triple attack into the ultimate down special, you're able to link it into a far light attack. This is a very tight link, though. Still, you do get an airborne juggle, and you can potentially get more off of this in mid-screen. You can do the full triple attack sequence in the corner and then still link it to a far light.
Once you're above five stocks, you get significantly more hits done when you go into this move, and you're able to link things like a close heavy slash depending on the stocks you have left. This incentivizes Percival players to actually, first off, use the ultimate down skill to get his stocks above five, and then maintain those stock levels to then cash out into huge damaging combos like this. This is a potential example of what combo routes can look like for Percival in this patch with these changes. Shouts to Virum for posting this combo as well, by the way. Absolutely insane damage for Percival to have. Since this game released, Percival has been regarded as one of the weaker characters in the cast. However, he's also been receiving a steady stream of buffs that have been able to boost his viability. Even though he's considered a mid-tier character by most in the previous version, Tororo was able to get second place with him at EVO this year, demonstrating that the character does still have potential. Now with all these buffs to his combo routing, how threatening his tools are, and capitalizing on his insane damage output with stocks, I think he's going to be a real contender for a high tier spot in this season, especially when you consider the system mechanic changes. The game's going to be slower with less damage from the system mechanics overall, and Percival didn't really use those system mechanics to his abuse necessarily. So with the games going on longer, he's actually going to be able to more reliably get into situations where he's able to apply more stocks and get into these over five stock situations and have big cash out hits to completely end a game. I'm very interested to see what happens with Percival. And I would suspect that many players who play the other Shoto like characters who left Percival because he was a shadow of his former self from the vanilla version of Grand Blue Fantasy Versus will probably make a return to the King of Flames in this patch.